Uh, Dr. Henry, I'm sure you've heard, uh, even while you were in Surrey, that a number of people in the community continue to call for a more concerted effort for vaccinations in Surrey, doing something like we've seen in Prince Rupert or other communities in terms of opening up for all age groups across the entire city. Is that something that at this point would still be considered, uh, considering I think it's still one of the hottest spots in the province? It is, and we've seen uh, a number of things happening, and especially in the high-risk communities, and we've identified those, and I know Fraser Health has been looking at where we need to target people to be immunized and to uh, to get registered and get into that immunization stream. And we'll continue to look at those uh, uh, high-risk CHSAs across the province, so it's not just in, in Surrey, though a large number of them are here. But what we have learned, of course, is that it's a very different thing to target a community with hundreds of thousands of people versus a community with a few thousand people. Um, so we need to use different strategies to make sure that people are able to get into the clinics in an efficient way. And I know Fraser Health is doing a good job at that, an amazing job of that, um, just by the, the numbers of people who have been immunized in the next few days. And you will see that ramped up with a focus on those high-risk communities that we know are here, um, particularly here in Surrey. Um, they've started today some um, kiosks to get people registered and some mobile, mobile units to get people registered. And for some people, that may mean even a same-day appointment at the clinics that are running and running efficiently here in the, in the city. So, yes, we are continuing to focus on, on doing what we can to um, get people immunized as quickly as possible in Surrey. I don't know if anybody else wants to? So I, th I think it's um, especially important for people in Surrey. There'll be more information later today in terms of the targeting, but it's there is going to be opportunities in Surrey to be vaccinated, and the key to it, the absolute key to it, is to register and when invited to book to book. And I really want to emphasize that, in particular here in Surrey, but everywhere in BC, but in particular in Surrey, we are. Uh, we've had a lot of success in the last number of days, as I mentioned, the registration numbers, the specific efforts by Fraser Health and the whole community here in Surrey, the efforts led by the Premier uh, across the province. We've seen a significant uptake in the last few days in registration, but I really encourage people to register and when they get a chance to book, to book right away. So because we are going to be able, we are going to be moving through the age cohorts very quickly, particularly in hotspot areas. And uh, Dr. Baum and her team will be up updating that through health authorities later today, particular community health service areas that are in question. But I think uh, here in Surrey, the uh, frontline workers have been given priority in Surrey. That's important. Uh, we're going to be giving priority to Surrey more than any other uh, large community in the province because what's happening here in Surrey is obviously significant in terms of transmission and vaccination is one of the ways that we can address that. It's not the only way though and we all have to continue to follow uh, the guidance of public health, the guidance and, the, and of course the pr public health orders that are in place. I'm wondering either Dr. Henry or Minister Dix, can you talk about, you mentioned that there's more details coming later, but I'm wondering if you can give a bit more indication. Uh, you know, you're in Surrey, we've seen the numbers stay high in Surrey. People are wondering what's being missed, either with educating people, with getting to communities, with making it easy for them to get their vaccination and follow protocols. What is being missed in the message getting to people who need to have it in that community and what is being done to try and alter that? Yeah, I, I don't know that anything's being missed. We have the largest numbers of people here. They work in, in many of our essential workplaces. People need to work in, in some of the uh, the more high-risk workplaces are here in, in this part of the province. So those are some of the things that lead to transmission. We know that many people in this community live in, in multi-generational homes with large numbers of people in their families. And that means that transmission in a family can happen very rapidly. So in terms of immunization, the immunization rates, the percentage of people immunized is actually very high here, but we need to do more because the population is larger here. So those are the things that we're continuing to focus on now that we finally have enough vaccine to be able to really ramp up the program. So um, that will be important in the next few weeks and we have started to see already um, things coming down in this community and we want that to continue. One, one. One of you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Henry, 
Thank you so much. Um, I think, uh, as Dr. Henry mentioned, there's unique areas within Surrey and Fraser Health region, such as essential workers and, and sometimes very vulnerable disadvantaged populations that where it's not easy for people to get away to get the immunizations or whether, whether, whether they're, they're can be uh, difficulties in terms of having protection at workplace uh, to prevent transmission as well. So all of that together has led to greater uh, number of cases and transmission in our setting. Uh, I do believe, however, it's important to remove every barrier possible to ensure that everybody registers and gets immunized as quickly as possible. We have put enormous amount of effort with our community partners and provincial leadership and support to get everyone registered as quickly as possible and get every in eligible person immunized as quickly as possible. Nothing would make me happier than all of uh, Surrey being protected um, and of course for our healthcare providers to have that done and for us to do that we need to ensure that um, everybody's registered and gets their immunization as quickly as possible and Fraser Health is finding new ways to do so in today's announcement. I think we had uh, information bulletin going out about uh, supporting registrations and this is building on the work that we've done with Gurdwaras and community or organizations and partners where we are going to outreach into different areas where we're seeing lower registration and trying to get boost that up and enhance that uh, and accelerate as quickly as possible. Yeah, and just briefly, in the two Surrey um, uh, local health areas, 233 and 234, uh, we now have uh, 220,000, uh, 22,000 people immunized as of yesterday. And uh, that number obviously grows every day. Syria was first in terms of education workers, and that's for good reason. Because even if many of those education workers or anyone working in workplaces in Surrey uh, may not live in Surrey or may not all live in Surrey, they obviously are connected to this community and to transmission in this community. So uh, Surrey was first in terms of all of those groups of frontline workers, and they're going to continue to be as we continue to focus on different groups of frontline workers, for example, grocery workers, and also focus on areas what are called hotspots. We identified uh, 13 were identified by Dr. Henry two weeks ago. Six of those those uh, community health service areas were in, uh, were in Surrey. And you're going to see a continuing and strong focus on doing exactly what people are asking us to do, which is to focus more vaccine in Surrey in the, in the coming week and uh, in the coming uh, few weeks. And that's what you're seeing. The most important question, though, regardless of the, all of those strategies, is that the people of Surrey and people everywhere else register for their vaccine. That allows you access as age rates drop in both hotspot areas and for the for the public as a whole, that people are eligible to get their vaccine, that they get registered and they get their vaccine. And that's the message that the Premier has been delivering um, this week uh, in this community, in Surrey and many other communities, and we want to deliver today. If you live in Surrey, get registered, and when you're invited to book, book your vaccine. There will be a ton of opportunities to do so in the next week or so. Definitely, and uh, we've been engaging with community leaders and uh, um, and uh, community partners throughout this. And uh, one of the areas that we focused on is registering and increasing accessibility for vaccines through uh, places of worship. In fact, uh, gurdwaras have been used through community partners. And uh, last weekend, we've uh, done registration there and going in actually with immunizations uh, in the coming days as well. So those will be ongoing efforts, and that'll be in addition to some of the other areas that we mentioned that are highly accessible, like malls, uh, some of the grocery stores, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, definitely that's an area that uh, we are expanding very rapidly in. And uh, Jawad, did you have a follow-up question? I do, thank you. And um, I was also wondering if there has been any assessment on governments or maybe uh, public health part as to why uh, there is low registration rate in racialized community perhaps Dr. Lee or Dr. or Minister Dix can answer that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I can start. Um, uh, yeah, you know, we we are looking. We've taken advice, uh, and especially this week, we've had a number of meetings. Uh, the premier has, the minister, and I have, um, and I know uh, Fraser Health has as well with community leaders, with leaders from different uh, uh, different groups, um, both here in Fraser Health but around the province, to try and better understand how do we reach out to certain groups because it's not just 
discussed in Surrey. Um, we certainly have seen uh, uh, in the Chinese community there's questions. And so it is about how do we um, provide the information that people need to make that, uh, that choice, that decision for themselves, and then make sure that uh, both the registration is easy and we can support people to do it, and the vaccine is accessible. So there's a whole variety of reasons, and I think it varies a little bit by different communities. Um, we're expanding our efforts to make sure that uh, that information that people need is available in a language that uh, that speaks to them uh, and from people who speak to them. Yeah, I think uh, I think Dr. Henry has said it well. We obviously have to continue the reaching out that's gone on really over the entire year to ensure that. Um, our message is heard by everyone and we receive feedback and that feedback guides our uh, how we approach different communities. I think we're seeing, um, we've seen really in the period in particular, uh, October, November, December, in that period uh, where there were issues around transmission, I think great uh, leadership, for example, in the South Asian community. Uh, very significant leadership in the Chinese Canadian community, but other communities as well that have stepped up and delivered those messages around transmission and physical distancing and all of the steps that we need to take. And, uh, and we need to really um, double down on all of that now. And I think we've seen that in particular this week, but in the last number of weeks, a uh, real effort to get registrations up everywhere, and particularly in, as you note, in, in racialized communities. And I think it's starting to have success, but we've got to just continue to work. And every, every time someone delivers that message, whether it's on, um, on social media, in the regular media, or to people and their families and friends, we need to contact people. And if they need help to be registered, get them registered. And uh, we need to otherwise encourage them to register, because this, uh, this is an important period. Every single person in BC, every single one, is going to have an access, uh, access to, a, to their uh, COVID-19 vaccine before the end of June and probably before. And uh, I think um, this is the time to get registered so you can get that access at the soonest possible moment. And that's particularly important to all of these efforts. And I think as well in the efforts led by the Premier this week in listening and learning and applying what we've been told by communities as well, which has gone out throughout the pandemic, but on registration is particularly important now.